Hi guys, it's Doc from the Gold Hog, and today I'm going to show you how to install your mat and how to put it together. And I'm going to show you the things that you're going to need and hope to kind of speed this up a little bit. But um, I am going to be talking about a few issues also with the mat as I go through this. So if I ramble a little bit, you'll have to excuse me, but I want to address some questions that always come up. So uh, if you're viewing this and you have your mat in stock now, I'm going to walk you through the simple installation process, how to put it together, but I'll also answer some questions while I'm doing this as well too. Uh, the first thing is, is of course it comes in uh, a 36 inch wide strip, it's about 6 inches long, and you have a male and you have a female end, and these are watertight locking tongue and groove systems. We made that so that as the water flows over them, there's no way that a heavy water flow can separate these mats. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can tape the mats together or you can glue them together. I prefer to glue them. If you want to tape them, you're afraid you're going to make a mistake with the glue, feel free to tape them. The tape that we use or we recommend um, is just about permanent, so you really don't have to worry about it. So you've got your mat and here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a couple of things. Um, Gorilla Glue. This is Super Glue, Gorilla Glue. It's what we've used, it's what we found, it's the best thing out there. Now this is the liquid. There's also a gel that we experimented, but what we found is that the gel doesn't provide enough um, lubrication when you're putting it together. We actually, we thought the gel slow cure would be better, but we actually found that the liquid super glue is better. So, but we love the, the um, Gorilla Super Glue. Now on this EDPM extruded rubber, uh, once you put super glue on this, believe it or not, it's absolutely permanent. So once we put this together and we try and pull apart the mats, we've actually had it under 200 pounds of pressure pulling it and we cannot get them to separate. So I'm gonna warn you, once you put this together, it's permanent, it will not come apart. There is no taking this mat apart. It will not fall apart, it's a waterproof seal, it's gonna be there permanently for years. So that's just a warning for you. Now I'm gonna be using the UR mat today, the under riffle mat, the little hog, but I'm also, the same thing applies to the scrubber mat. So here's the scrubber mat, and then here's the UR, but these two interlock, so if you want to put this on the top of your sluice, let's say you want to put this under your sluice box, the main header unit, Grizzly, then you want to come down to a scrubber unit, you can go to a scrubber unit, and then you can return back to the UR mat. So you can interchange these, you can make it work, scrub the material, have it broken down, then it goes into uh, expanded metal or riffles, however you're going to set up your sluice, but they do, the, the tongue and groove systems are exactly the same on them, so they interlock and interchange. Um, so you're going to need your super glue, you're going to need Gorilla Tape. Um, I should have left the package on this, but again, this is available at Home Depot, Lowe's, or online. It is a double sticky duct tape that is, we found to be super, super adhesive and strong and water resistant. We can't get this to come off. We've actually used this to weld some of our aluminum machines together in the field. Um, it's a wonderful product, but we really like it. It's Gorilla Duct Tape. And we may even put a link on the page to that too. But these two products, it sounds like we're marketing Gorilla Glue and Gorilla Tape, but they, we love them. They're excellent products. And you're going to need um, a utility knife, a razor knife utility blade. Now, this is where I really have strong recommendation, get a new blade. If you don't have a new blade, get a new blade. It makes all the difference in the world. And then a couple of paper towels, and you'll understand the paper towels in just a minute, but um, I decided to shoot this sort of in my kitchen on a, on a, on a counter because this is a smooth sort of uh, granite type counter, and I like the ability for it to slide. If you try this on wood or cement, you can do it. We do commercial mats on cement floors all the time, but this is just, it's easy to work with, it's slippery, and that's what we want to have. We want to have a little bit of a slippery surface here. Okay, you also need a measuring tape. You also need some kind of marker pen. I just use a regular marker, even though it's black on black, you'll still be able to see it. And you'll need an angle iron or a piece of straight metal. Um, normally I use an angle iron, but I figure everyone might not have one, so just grab a piece, some piece of metal, any kind of metal, or a ruler that has a straight edge on it um, and just something to something to guide your cut as you're going along 
but I decided to use this instead of my T just so I could show you that you don't have to have a T square to get it perfectly square. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cut for a 10 inch sluice. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'll put this in maybe a Keen A52, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut um, a 10 inch sluice. So I've measured my sluice bed, the bottom of the sluice bed, and I know the bottom of my sluice bed is exactly 10 inches. Now, you're going to measure the top and you're going to measure the middle and measure the bottom as you go down because a lot of sluices are not the same, especially when you're working with a high banker unit. That, that grizzly unit may squeeze that upper unit and the bottom might be a little bit different. So you want to make sure and check it. Take your measurements all the way down. So I know that it's 10 inches. So I'm going to make mine 9 and 3 quarters. And you want this mat to fit pretty tightly, but I'm going to show you a little trick afterwards why I leave an eighth of an inch on each side. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it to buckle. Um, it's not going to bother. If it does, you just push it down. But um, I, I take about an eighth of an inch off on each, each side. You don't want a large gap because water and materials will flow down the side. But again, I'm going to show you a trick on how to take care of that too. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, I'm going to grab my pen. I know I'm at nine and three quarters. So I'm at nine and three quarters. I'm at nine and three quarters. And I'm going to put one more mark just to be safe. Trust me, when you ruin enough of them, you learn how to do it. So I've got my marks here. I'm going to go through and I'm going to put my square or straight edge down and I'm going to mark it. Now you can cut this with a razor blade with or without it. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut it with it right now. But the important part to understand is when you're cutting this is you really don't have to worry about the blade turning in. That's usually what people don't do. They usually let the blade come out. But you just hold it square and sort of lean to the side of this and watch your blade. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put medium pressure. I'm not going to push really hard. I'm just going to put medium pressure and I'm going to go straight down this mark right here. And I'm going to go slow and just let the blade do the work. So I'm going to go slow, keep my hands out of the way. And I'm just going to let the blade do the work. Now, you can do it a couple ways. You can go back and you can recut it if you want. One little trick that we've learned is to do the teepee. And what I mean by teepee is that if you bend this now that you've made one cut, you're going to notice that you already have a split in here. So I like to leave it sort of on a teepee like this. And then what I do is I just let it, the blade fall down the middle. So I just let the blade fall down the middle, fall down the middle, fall down the middle. And that sort of keeps me from making multiple cuts on it. And now the mat comes apart. So now I have a nine and three quarter mat right here. So I'm gonna get the next one, same thing. And I'm, you can use this to trace it, but I prefer to measure it again. And I've always tell people, especially when we're doing our commercial sluices, we never trace old mats. We always measure again in case someone made a mistake. But I got nine and three quarters, nine and three quarters, nine and three quarters. The bad thing is, is to cut one mat the wrong way, the first one, and then have them all the wrong size. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna put a mark on it. And again, I'm gonna take my razor, Put it up on the line and hold it firm and just let the knife do the work. Just come down, just let the knife do the work. And again, I'm going to TP it. You can see that it's split, it's probably about halfway through. And I'm just going to let the blade do the rest right down the middle. Let the blade do it right down the middle. tight and keep going. You don't want to pull them too hard. You want to make sure that they're cut. Okay, so now I've got my mats here. Now I recommend that if you measure your sluice and your sluice is off a little bit, what you're going to want to do, and this is an important step, is you're going to want to number your mats. 
So if one of my, if my top mat is nine and three quarter, my next mat is nine and seven eighths, I'm gonna number them. So I'm gonna number them. This is one, two, three, so that I know that I'm putting them in the right order as I assemble them. Now, the scrubber mat is easy to is easy because on the scrubber mat, you'll notice it's easy to figure out which way. This is the water flows this way. But when you look at the UR mat, it's kind of hard to figure out. So what I always say is I always say that the duck flies north. And if you look at the two different sides of this, there's, um, there's a, a nose side, what we'll call the male, and then there's a hole side that we'll call the female. And I, this kind of looks like a duck head to me. So I always say the duck flies north, and that's the way the water's gonna flow. This always points forward. So I'm gonna put this here, and then this goes in this tail end here. Okay, so now if you're doing this for the first time, here's what I recommend. I recommend you practice putting this together. Actually put it together and push it together, and you'll see that I always start on one end. So I'm gonna form a little bit of a V, not huge. I'm gonna make sure it fits in, and then I'm gonna push it together like this. And now my mat is together. Now, if you do it perfectly, you'll have no gap in here on the seam. Same thing on the back. If it fits in together perfectly, you'll have no gap here. Now, some people make a mistake and it doesn't seal perfectly, it doesn't matter. Um, if you have a little gap in here, that's fine. <laughs> Once you get this mat together, like I said, it's not coming apart. The gap's not gonna hurt anything. But, so don't be, don't worry and say, oh, I put it together wrong, I didn't get the seat right. It, it really doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that you know I'm, I'm going north with this, and you can't install the mats backwards. So you can't install one one way and one the other way because of the way the system's set up. They have to go together in a certain way. But you do wanna make sure you have them in order if your sluice is different. So this is my top, my next, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna number them if my sluice is different. If my sluice is all the same, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna glue these together. And here's a little trick that I like to do. And I like to put a piece of paper towel under it. And the reason being is, of course, this is rubber. And rubber likes to grab surface. So if you push on it, this one is gonna stick. This one's gonna keep sliding. So I like to put a paper towel under them. Even on our large sluices, when we do commercial setups, I still like to put a little paper towel under it. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two beads. I'm gonna put a little bit on this edge, on the inside. So I go to the female edge, and I'm just gonna put right down the channel. I'm gonna watch, and I'm gonna put a little bit of a bead down there. Then, I'm gonna take this, and on the leading top edge, I'm gonna put another generous bead. And I say generous because I want you to put enough on there. I don't want you to be too shallow with it because if you want it to be in a liquid state because it provides some lubrication when they go together, you'll notice they slide together pretty easily. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in here, and then I'm gonna, again, slide together, slide together, slide it together. Now, my mat's together. Pretty good, no new seams on it, but here's, now here's the trick that I like to do. I'm gonna take the duct tape, and I'm gonna get approximately this, tear it in half, I'm gonna get a little strip. So now I've got my monster, my Gorilla Tape. I wanna put this across the top seam. And the reason why I put it across the top seam is because this glue is still wet. When I turn this over, it's gonna to stick to the counter like it's wanting to do right now. So, because most of your glue is gonna come out the top when you do it this way, if, it, if any comes out. So now I've got my bat bottom, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a full piece of tape on this. I don't know why I just like to do this. Um, I just like the security of an extra piece of tape, but while you're making it, um, and it lets the glue cure right away, this tape is incredibly strong. Now it's all set. I don't have to worry about is it set or anything. I can go ahead and um, I can just do whatever I need to do. Now I can move on to my next mat. This is not coming apart. I don't care how hard you pull it, it's not coming apart. So now I can finish making up that mat. <clears throat> now after it's dried, um, you can go ahead and you can take off this top layer of tape here. You can just pull this and you may have a little residue here. Just leave it, don't worry about it. The residue bumps on here, hey, it acts like a little gold trap, don't worry about it. 
but just pull that top layer of tape off if you want to. Uh, if you want to leave it on, you can leave it on. I take it off on our commercial applications. Um, we take it off all the time. We just pull it off and then you have a nice, smooth, good looking mat. So that's a 10 inch wide sluice. Um, now I'm going to show you a small sluice. This is a mat we did for one of our finishing, uh, one of our test sluice. This is about seven, is it seven and three quarters? That's about seven inches. This is the seven inch sluice. So this is a seven inch mat, but I want, the reason why I have this is I want to show you one of the nice things. If this is inside your sluice when you take it out, all you have to do is just roll it up. So all you have to do is just roll this mat up, just roll it up, put your hand on the side and carry it over to the bucket. Put it in the bucket, go up and down three times, it washes it out. Now. Here's the other part about this. Because it has hidden chambers inside of it, those hidden chambers are gonna be grabbing gold because you have it rolled up on yourself. So what you need to learn to do is this little trick. This is a little trick that we've learned. You need to reverse roll the bucket. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse roll this. And when I reverse roll this inside the bucket, now what happens is those angles change and those chambers open up. So now I can just dip it in the bucket like this Go up and down three times, inspect it, but now there's no more pressure on these on these little inside chambers. They're sort of spread out because I've reverse rolled it. So the first time you take it out of your sluice, let me show you that one more time. So it's in your sluice. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll it up in your sluice. And again, this pinches all your all your concentrates. Now you can put your hand on one side and you can carry it over to the bucket. Just a little bit of a tilt on it. You don't have to worry about anything coming out. Get it into your bucket, go up and down two or three times, the majority of the material will come out. Now what you want to do is you just want to reverse roll. So now the treads, we'll call them, or chambers, are going to be on the outside and they flare out. So those chambers now stretch a little bit, open up. Now you can let it sort of flare out, up and down three times, inspect it, and you're done. Your mat's clean. Now you can roll it back into your box, or just slide it right back into your box and you're done. Now, if you are doing a commercial or large sluice operation, the matting is heavy. So, um, one strip of this, one 36 inch strip, weighs 2.5 pounds. It's very heavy. This is uh, very heavy extruded rubber. It's approximately 3 eighths of an inch thick on the UR. It's extremely durable. As far as toughness, if you think about um, a tire tread, it's the same firmness. It's called a durameter scale. It's about a 70 on the durameter um, firmness scale, but it feels like tire tread. So it's not soft, it's firm, but it is pliable. It's extremely tough. Um, and it goes down to, I believe the rating is over 200 degrees um, Fahrenheit and below minus 20 on the flexibility and working scale that we've tested. Uh, lifespan. The average miner um, that's maybe going out once a week or twice a week during the seasons, this should last, I would say, an easy three to five years. Commercial operations, commercial operations, if they're running the majority of the year, will get at least a full, maybe two seasons, two years out of this mat. I mean, it's, it's extremely durable, and it also depends what you put over it. If you're running material straight over it, then it's gonna wear a little bit more, but we have, we have nowhere out of thousands of hours of running this, we've had zero wear on this. So, now I'm going to show you a commercial mat. This is one we actually made up that we're going to install um, next week, I think. But this is a commercial sluice, and they have a pretty long sluice. They run it 20 inches wide, and um, I forget how many feet it is. I'm guessing it's about 15 feet, the multiple stages that they have. But this is an actual, this is going into a commercial sluice and I wanted to show you that what we did was the matting itself is pretty heavy, but when you get concentrates in this, this mat right now, so let's say it's one, two, three, four, five, so let's say it's about 12 pounds. If this is maybe about 10 pounds because it's not 36, so let's say it's about 10 pounds, 8 to 10 pounds. When you put your concentrates on here, this mat's going to get very heavy. So, on a commercial sluice, you're going to add probably another 15 pounds of concentrates and heavies in here and gold, and this thing's going to weigh a lot. So, again, we like to keep it in shorter sections, and then we just butt it up. When we get it and put it in a sluice, we just butt it up, 
slide it into it. Doesn't have to be perfect fit. Majority of our commercial operations are running um, heavy expanded metal, so it holds it down. But again, the same thing. A commercial operation can simply just roll this mat up, just like this. Throw it into a bin. Hold a hand on it. Throw it into a bin. Rinse it out. Do a reverse roll. Get it to open up because this is going to hold. Them. There's going to be a ton of fine gold inside of these little teeny hidden chambers, and that's what you got to be careful about. So let's move on to the next step. And the next thing I'm going to talk to you about, a lot of people don't talk about, and that's the that's the horizontal horizontal movement of gold. Whenever you have an active mat, like a V-rib or this mat or a vortex or even an anything carpet, your sluice is vibrating. The water is going down, the materials, and it's vibrating. And if you've ever seen someone work a pan of gold, you tap it and the gold will move as you tap it. Well, the same thing happens in a sluice. It can actually move. That gold can slowly vibrate, slowly vibrate over, and it can actually get out the edges. And that's why we recommend if you have a sluice, you probably should have some kind of lip on the end. We like to see a little bit of a lip, and I don't know why more manufacturers don't put that on there. Just a quarter of an inch little trap at the end of it to keep it in, but we like to see that, but they don't do it. But here's a little trick to keep it from any gold escaping out the sides, and this is probably the only mat you can do this with. You can't do this with uh, miner's moss or carpet or anything else. So I'm gonna show you this little trick, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of tape, full width, and I'm going to go along the side, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it about halfway on the mat. Okay, so I've put it on the mat, and you can see I've got about eh, maybe a third, maybe a third of that tape hanging off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in on itself, just like this. Yeah, I'm going to fold it in on itself, just like this. So I'm going sticky to sticky now, all along the side. Just folding it in. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So, now I've folded that in. So you're going to ask yourself, why do I have that little tape on there? Well, I've left an eighth of an inch gap on my, on my sluice bed. So when I put this in, this tape is actually going to fold up. So this tape is actually going to fold up on the side. And what ends up happening is it creates a seal along the side. It creates a seal along the side here to block these side chambers. And it keeps any gold from moving out the sides. That's, we've, we've actually seen gold escape from the sides because of vibration on all matting. But this is pretty interesting little trick that we do. It's for the OCD people but a lot of fine gold and but just put it on there and when you put it in it closes up and it locks up that side. Now I've got a mat already made up. Uh, this is one, we've actually used this several times. There's still dirt, there's probably gold in here, believe it or not. But uh, you can see this one has a little bit larger tape strip on it. I left it a little bit larger, but same thing, it folds up. Again, it folds up on the side and it locks that side in. So now, instead of having open chambers, now all of a sudden they're closed up. So now you have a completely closed up mat. And especially if you're running high water volume, and when I say high water volume, of course that depends on your width. So if you have an eight inch sluice and you're running 4,000 gallons, that's high water volume. Um, if you have an 18 inch sluice and you're running 4,000, that's low water volume. So it all depends on the, on the gallons per hour per inch. Um, but most dredges and high bankers run at a pretty high flow rate and this little trick is a real good little trick because the, this mat will run for a very long time without needing to be clean because all it will hold is just heavies. It's only going to hold black sand, it's only going to hold gold, it's continually working, continually, continually processing down material through the active reduction and minimization process arc that we talked about. So it's, it's an active mat, it's continually working. This whole mat is energized while water is flowing over it. And that energized is a vortex reduction. So it's gonna hold, it's gonna keep processing materials and processing materials. And you'll see, especially on your lights and larger materials, it's just gonna flow right over the mat. It's not even gonna get worked. Only your heavies will be worked by this mat.
And that's the nice thing about it. If you have a lot of black sand, perfect mat. When you take it out, it's going to be solid black looking from black sand. It's an amazing thing to see. Okay, so I think that's about all on the tips and tricks for putting your mat together. Now what I want to do is I'm going to show you, and I think what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to use a keen sluice. Let me move some of my stuff here. I'm just going to use a keen sluice. Um, instead of trying to bring a high banger in, into the kitchen here, I figure I'd just use a regular keen sluice. So a lot of people have this A52 or A51. Some people have a Joe. Whatever your sluice product is, there's always an attachment method for your, for your riffle system to go in here. So Keen uses, they have a bolt up in here, and this slides in, and then you have a locking system here. So the locking system unlocks, and this slides down. So our mat is about 3 eighths of an inch, which is, they come standard with a very thin carpet mat. So it's gonna be tight when you do this. Um, it'll fit in most sluices, but it's gonna be just a little bit tight. And if you want to make the modification, there's an easy way to do it. All we've done on this, let me lock that down. Let's see if you can see this. But all we've done on this is we've just, there's the hole that comes from the factory. We've only gone up just barely enough to make a new hole, it's less than a quarter of an inch. We've just moved this up a quarter of an inch, and we found that that's a good way to do it. If you have a snapping lock that holds your riffle system in, like this, all you have to do, what we found, is just bend this riffle, bend this snap a little bit, and just lengthen it, and when you do that, you'll have the room in here, if, if there's any room needed for the extra. Some fit perfectly, but since the key, since this sluice is so popular, we figured we'd show you on this one. So all I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna replace it, do it a couple different ways. Um, I didn't make this mat for this, so it's not going to be long enough probably. But again, the duck flies north, so I'm going to put this in here. And again, you can see it's a 10 inch sluice, and the mat fits in very tightly. A little too tight on this one but let me tell you what it's not coming out so I'm just gonna push it in there and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you if you didn't want to use expanded you just wanted to use the riffles you would just put your riffles back in and slide up under goes back down and now you have your active mat under your riffles and since we moved it it's still gonna be it's gonna fit perfectly now, if you want to go ahead and put the expanded metal back in, that's fine. There's always been an issue, there's always been an issue with expanded metal under riffles. And that is, is that there's water flow coming under your riffles and people are afraid, well, it's blowing out the gold because I have expanded metal in. So let me show you how this mat solves that problem. So now, I'm gonna put their expanded metal back on top of this mat. You can run it just like this if you want, but you would need, this is aluminum, so it's too lightweight. You need something to hold it. Now I'm going to put this back on. So now I'm going to put this back on, the ripples. And we'll lock her down. And so now we have the Keen A52 with the UR mat installed inside of it. And we did it with the expanded metals and the riffle system. So. Here's the problem in the past. The problem in the past is that people say, well, I can see the light under my riffles. In other words, water is coming in and it's blowing out material that was supposed to be held by this riffle. Well, that problem has been solved. That's because people are using what we call passive mattings. They've been using carpet. They've been using miner's moss. They've been using things that really aren't an active. Even a V-mat really isn't an active mat per se. The V-mat really doesn't turn active. It just sort of sits there and has grooves. We found that they're really, when well, they're small, and it's just not really an active mat um, in the name, in like a vortex matting or the UR mat. But here's why this solves this, and that's because 
you actually want water flow to go into your ripples with this mat. It's a good thing. As the water flow goes under here, it's creating your active mat. Same thing if you're using Vortex. A lot of people, we like Vortex matting. A lot of people use Vortex. It's fine. You actually want the water flow under your riffles. Remember this golden rule, and if you've read anything on our website, you understand that riffles don't hold gold. The matting holds gold. The riffles create a low pressure zone. Yes, some material is going to sit under here, but if you really want to hold gold, the matting is what holds it. So now, as this water goes, water can go under this ledge at the front of the riffle, it doesn't matter, because you've got um, a completely active mat that's going to hide gold inside of here. If vortex collapse, no problem, the gold is hidden in here, as you've seen from some of our videos. So, again, Keen uses this system on a lot of their, on a lot of their units, so it's pretty crossbred, but the same thing on all your units. There's usually a latch system. You might have to modify a little bit, but it's pretty close most of the time. Now, let me show you one other trick. Um, and this really is not that big of a deal, but let's talk about the leading edge of the mat. Some people, and this is actually one of the guys showed me this trick. They actually, I didn't think of this one, but it is really a good trick. Let me get this out of here. So, when your mat comes, ships to you, it's going to have, of course, the duct flying north or the, the front edge. And on that front edge, you're going to see that there's a little lip here. So there's a female edge right there. And what you can do is if you cut that little female ledge off, now you have a ramp, a 45 degree ramp. So what you can do is just run a razor blade along it and you can have a 45 degree ramp as your front edge. You can just cut that little lip off. And it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is just take your razor blade and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just hold it along, push down gently, just keep following that line and following that line. You'll have a ramp. And if you want to mold it and shape it, you can shape it into a nice gentle ramp. So when the water hits it, water hits it you actually have a ramp there and then we we've gotten to the point now that we recommend that because um, because of this design that you just cut this front leading edge off after you've made your mat You'll do that after you've made your mat so um, I think I've covered just about everything I've covered uh, the only the only other thing I want to cover maybe is a question about water flow and the different use of the mat so the mat, this mat was designed because of the need for an active mat, number one, but also a mat that could take high water flows. And when I say high water flows, it varies from the size of your sluice. Obviously, if I have, um, if I have an eight inch wide sluice versus a 10 inch wide sluice versus versus a 20 inch wide sluice, the water flow is gonna vary. So, and what I mean by that, the velocity and the speed of the water and the intensity of the water is gonna be different. So on a, so let's say I was gonna put 6,000 gallons per hour on an eight inch sluice. That's a lot of water. That's a tremendous amount of water going through an eight inch sluice. On a 10 inch sluice, uh, that's not too bad. That's a pretty good flow. Uh, you'll get real good cleaning on it. On a 20 inch wide sluice, 6,000 gallons an hour is really not that much water. So you really, a lot of people say, well, what's the, uh, get the best um, uh, flow rate? Gallons per hour, gallons per minute? Well, it varies on your sluice. Um, and that's why this mat can take a tremendous water flow. And the, the more water you give it, the better it likes it. That's all I can say to you. We've tested it in large commercial operations with huge water flows coming over it and it just loves it, it just makes it more active. So don't worry about your water flow, you can play with it, you can test with it. People ask about the pitch of it, What's, what pitch should I run, should I run at a 15 degree, 20 degree? We found that it really has no, no real significant difference on it. Um, you can just, as long as your material is clearing the way that you want, then you're fine. If you want to raise it up some, Raise it slowly, 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 bring it down. Once your material's all clearing out of your system, boom, stop, you've hit the perfect. Well, we like to call it Kentucky windage. So you're just sort of playing for your own system because every system is different. The 
The other thing people ask about a finishing mat. And on a finishing mat, this actually works really well on a finishing mat. And what we do with this is we put this in our regular sluice, we tone it down a little bit. So let's just say if we were running a 10 inch and we were running four or 5,000 gallons per hour, um, we would tone it down to about half of that. We would pitch it up a little bit. We'd bring, we'd decrease the slope of it. And what we do is we actually run our concentrates through it. So we put a bucket at the end of our sluice and we run our concentrates that we've pulled all day long. We run it across this mat and all of a sudden it now becomes a super concentrator mat. So yes, you can use it as a super concentrator or finishing mat. It works really well. Again, the only problem being is that, you know, it's designed to hold heavy materials. So if you, it's, it's going to hold black sand. So you're not going to get rid of your black sand. Um, so just remember, if you're running your concentrates, it's just a good next step to run them through this again. Put a bucket down here, reduce your water flow, put it on the mat, let it run through. Um, you'll at least clean out. You'll at least clean out a lot of those lights out of here. But I don't think you'll be able to clean out a lot of your uh, black sand because it's designed to clean black sand. The funny thing about this is, is there's actually gold in this mat. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually still gold held in this mat, and that's how that's how amazing this mat is as far as gripping. I've actually, we've actually got gold. This is a test mat. We're running gold through it, but there's still gold sitting in those micro chambers that we really didn't clean out that well. That's some amazing stuff there. So, oops on us. We pulled this out of the test. We pulled this out of the test loose, one of the test loose, to actually show you this. So, I probably have gold all over the counter now. That's great. So anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know, but I think we've covered it all. Um, again, you can run this mat by itself if you want. Um, it'll, it'll work in a sluice by itself. You can run it under expanded metal. If you're going to run it under expanded metal, of course, you're going to have to have something to hold the expanded metal down. Um, we recommend if you're just going to use expanded metal that you go with the heavy steel expanded metal because it's heavy in weight and it'll actually hold itself down. But majority of people put it in some kind of sluice with some kind of holding system. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope I explained everything for you. And good luck with your new mat. Thanks.